Hello viewers at home, thank you once again for tuning in onto our show today. My name is Chef Andy, your regular host, and today we are going to be doing something interesting with some lentils. We're going to be making a curly dal, we're going to be also pairing that with some jira rice, but before we get to that point, I will begin by introducing what we'll be working with to give you a broader perspective of what we'll be working with today. So from the very front, I've got some jira seeds, about a, a full teaspoon. I've also got a teaspoon of paprika powder. You're also going to require half a tablespoon of unsalted butter and one tablespoon cumin powder. You're also going to require two cloves of garlic, some minced ginger, about half a teaspoon, some sumac sticks as well, and one whole lemon. You're also going to require about a quarter piece of green pe bell pepper, chopped up very finely, about a quarter cup of coconut cream, about three sticks of uh, spring onion chopped very finely. You're also going to be incorporating to this some coriander leaves, about half a cup of cooked white basmati rice. You're also going to require some drained, cooked and cooled off lentils, about a full cup, some oil to cook with, some salt for seasoning, and last but not least, some water to aid you in your cooking process. But before we begin, we're going to give you a chance to stretch, take a break, grab your pens and papers, and we'll see you after a short break. Welcome back viewers. For those of you who are just catching up with us, we've just been introducing the ingredients before us. We're now going to start the process by very, very simply making our Kali Dal. And it's a very, very simple technique. As I mentioned in the beginning of the, of the show, remember you will require some Kali Dal. Remember this is a particularly rare kind of um, Dal or rather the local name as we call it, Dengu. So this is a very rare one and a particular very, very special one that is cooked on the Kash in the Kashmir region of India. You may actually be able to find this with a very, very different name if you're going to be going into the stores or even to try it out for a dinner or two or a, or a lunch. And um, one particular beautiful thing about using lentils is one, they're actually very low on cholesterol and two, they're a very good addition to your diet. Three, for the fact that they are very, very good and they are very, very rich in protein. So this is for the fact that this is a very common dish among the Indian community. So we're going to start off the process very, very gently by heating up a pan. I'm just going to allow that to come to the heat. Now very, very simple, uh, for, the, for those of you who may actually wonder how we're going to come up with jerry rice with the cooked rice that we have, remember it's very, very important that if you're going to be making jira rice, remember you are going to be frying it very, very slightly on a pan. Remember you can't actually fry uncooked rice, remember it will actually get it to be very sticky, it will break your grains and it will actually give you a very, very different consistency. So very important to mention, always try and work with pre-cooked rice for this particular technique. And for those of you who may actually want to make this a little faster in time, remember you can make your rice in advance, allow it to cool off, let it sit in the refrigerator. But remember to always pull your ingredients out from the refrigerator before cooking them because you will actually uh, need to actually allow for them to come to room temperature. As for the dal, 
You can be able to purchase this at your retail uh, outlets within the city. You can also be able to find it in a can. So you actually may even also be able to use this in the canned method, but always very important to remember if you're going to be making this from tinned dill, uh, from uh, tinned lentils, very important that you actually begin your process of cooking beforehand and then incorporate this to your dish a little later. So now our pan is nice and smoky. We're going to add a tablespoon of some cooking oil. I'm using canola oil for this recipe. You can also alternate that for olive oil or vegetable oil. Wouldn't make much of a difference. So first off, we're going to proceed to add our spring onions. Now one particular beautiful thing about spring onions is, is that they've got a nice beautiful buttery flavor to them. They're not as pungent as red onions and they actually give a very good visual appearance with a dish. So we're going to begin by sweating those very quickly in our pan. And to that we'll proceed to incorporate some of our other ingredients. So I'm going to start off by adding my ginger that's already minced. Also going to add about a half of my jera powder or cumin powder. You're also going to add a small handful of some sumac sticks. This you can actually also find at your retail stores. Um, proceed to also add a small dash of paprika powder and proceed proceed to mix everything together now you can actually proceed to bring your heat up to medium and now your pan will actually begin to dry off very quickly after adding your dried herbs and spices so be sure to always reserve just a little bit more oil to actually refresh your pan. And once you get that nice beautiful fragrance coming through, proceed to add your green peppers. Now proceed to reduce your heat to medium and proceed to fry together. And very important to have a bit of water just to cool off your pot. And remember this will also aid you in combining the ingredients in your pan a little faster. Also allows for you to drain a bit of those spices that are stuck to the side of your pan. And it will also allow for you to incorporate all your ingredients into a nice consistent mixture. Now we're going to proceed to add a bit of our garlic. So for this we're not going to be chopping it finely. I'm just going to slice the cloves in half. And for this particular reason I'm actually leaving them whole because I do want them to actually be visible. The only thing I want is for that beautiful juice of the garlic to flavor the mixture. And remember it's also nice and handy to have a little bit of chunks in a dill in a in a mixture particularly like lentils. Because for one reason, lentil does come in a very small size. You may actually want to incorporate some ingredients to really give it a bit of color. So you can go with carrots, peppers, any particular vegetables that you like. But be very sure to make sure to do a bit of research on most of the recipes we give because you may actually incorporate an ingredient that will alter the taste of your dish. So very important to do a bit of research before you do so. Right, once you get that beautiful aroma from the garlic coming through, we're going to proceed to season very lightly. Proceed to mix through once more. Now from here you can actually proceed now to add your coconut milk. Proceed to mix through once more and proceed to simmer that just up until your coconut is nice and warm and actually just also until you actually get those nice beautiful fragrances to come through. 
and just up until you can be able to smell your coconut mixture, proceed to grab your lentils. And before you actually add them to your pot, always be sure to just tilt your bowl over the sink, making sure to empty any excess water that may be in there. And you can proceed to add that to your pot. And again, proceed to mix through. Allowing this to cook at medium to low heat. And we actually should actually cook this or, or rather allow, the, allow it to come to simmering point and then drop the temperature completely. Paying attention to one that your lentils will cook a little, a li may actually overcook very easily if you don't pay attention to that particular step. And second of all, because we've already cooked the lentils once before, it's actually a little easier to finish off the dish. So for this particular process, you're actually now allowing just for the ingredients to really blend in well together. And now we can also proceed to add a bit of our coriander leaves. So grab a small handful. And proceed to begin by taking off the stems and proceed to chop that as fine as possible. And of course something also to remember as well, dill or, or rather dill is a good alternative to using coriander for this particular recipe. It is not a particular, it's not particularly an Indian addition, but it actually carries a very, very good butteriness to it that enriches the flavor of the spring onions. So it's also a very good addition to this. And something also to remember with lentils, if you're going to be working with raw lentils, particularly store-bought lentils that are not cooked or soaked in any particular liquid, very important to soak them overnight. It always allows for you to cook them a little faster. Another point to also pay attention to is if you're going to be looking at saving quite a bit of time cooking your lentils from scratch, you may actually want to soak them uh, beforehand overnight. And if not, if you're going to be cooking them on the same day, you may actually want to cook them in a pressure cooker. It will save you uh, resources and it will actually save you time as well. Right, so we're now getting that beautiful aroma of the coconut and the lentils coming through. And now that this is almost ready, we're going to finish off by just adding a bit of color to it with our coriander. Remember, coriander is a very good addition to a lot of Indian dishes, and it's actually the most common ingredient, except for the chilies, of course. And one beautiful thing about coriander is it's got a natural characteristic of combining flavors together, adds a bit of color to the dish and really enriches that flavor of the onions and any particular meats that you may have in your dish. Also a very, very handy tip. Right, now we've gotten to the last and final step of our, prepa uh, of our preparation for the lentils. Now I'm going to take you to the next step of cooking the jira rice. So we're going to start off by turning over this pot to the other end and allowing it to cook slowly until it's done. So that should actually uh, get anywhere between four to six more minutes. And just until the liquid is thick enough, and remember you should actually be very wary to make sure that you don't overcook the mixture. So just up until the liquid is nice and thick, you can proceed to turn off your heat completely and serve immediately. But before we get there, I'm going to begin by heating another pan here. I'm just going to get rid of some of the ingredients on our counter. Now we're going to be working with some, we're going to be finishing off some jira rice. And as I mentioned, very, very simple technique, especially for those of you who are looking at saving quite a bit of time. This is going to be a recipe that actually may work for most of you. Remember, if you do have a bit of time, you can actually also cook your rice with some jira seeds and then remove it, allow it to cool, and bring it to the last and final step, which is the frying and combining of your spices. So we're going to start off the process very, very gently by melting some butter in a pan. 
And for this, you may actually want to use a non-stick pan or any frying pan for that matter that's got a very thin base because you are going to be frying your rice. Remember, a thick base pan will actually be overcook your rice, so you may actually want to find the thinnest base pan in your pantry. Right, so begin the process by melting your butter. And once your butter is completely melted down, proceed to add your rice. Add also a small bit of olive oil for flavor and proceed to add your cumin powder and proceed to mix through. Right, once those are in, proceed to add your fennel seeds or your cumin seeds. Add also your paprika powder. Mix through once more. At this point, reduce your heat completely to low. And that should give you just enough heat to keep your rice warm on the pan and allow for a nice beautiful frying of your rice. Now proceed to toss once more to mix through. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very simple technique of doing your jira rice. But of course, always be sure to season any food that you're particularly making. And just an extra addition, something I like to add to really give a lift to the dish, a bit of lemon. So proceed to grab a sieve very quickly and very gently proceed to squeeze your lemon over the rice. Mix through very, very quickly. And at this stage you can proceed to turn off your heat on the rice and your heat on the lentils and we can proceed to serve. But before we do so, very crucial that I clean up my station to give it a nice, more pleasant, pleasant appearance. But don't touch that dial. We'll see you in a very, very, very short while. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you have missed out on what we've been working on today, remember you can always catch up on this and many other episodes that you've missed out on on our Facebook page which is Brand Plus TV. But for this particular reason, we're going to finish off this last and final stage of this dish. So very, very simply, I'm going to grab a plate. And as, as you can see from the plate, I've got a very, uh, very similar lemon wedge to one we squeezed in in the rice. For this particular recipe, even in my creation of this recipe, I realized a, lemon, a bit of lemon juice will actually uplift that beautiful coconut aroma and that beautiful coconut flavor. It will also just mellow down the butterness, th that butteriness of your lentils and give a very, very beautiful flavor. So I will recommend for those of you who have not tried to add a bit of acid to your food, this is one particular good recipe that you could do so. So now to finish off our dish, I'm going to begin by fluffing up our jira rice. And I'm just going to scoop that into our bowl right in the center. And remember for those that may not be particular fans of using cumin, you can alternatively use 
a lot of other different spices to fry your rice in. Remember the whole idea is to really just to give it a nice beautiful fragrance and of course to get rid of that plain boring white steamed rice uh, aftertaste. So just last and final scoop. And next up your lentils. So I'm going to give that a quick mix and I'll proceed to place some of those garlic heads right on the side of the plate. Remember as I mentioned they do also give a very beautiful appearance on your plate so be sure to not just let them sink away in your in your in your curly dal and now last and finally proceed to scoop your dal mixture and as you can see it's not a runny consistency it's very much uh, very consistent even in appearance and in, uh, in in texture and as i mentioned very important to add a bit of speck of color to your dal because it does actually get very boring on your plate and it may actually look um, unappetizing. So a very, very handy tip. Add a bit of color to your dal. It will always just bring a bit of flavor as well and it will also just look really, really appetizing on the table. And now just to finish that off, as I mentioned, coriander being a very, very handy ingredient and an addition to any dal. Very importantly, add that to your plate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my very simple take on uh, dali kal, uh, sorry, kal uh, dal with some jira rice. You have been watching Brand Plus TV. This is Dinner Guide and this is Chef Andy bidding you farewell. And until the next episode, enjoy your dinner this evening and see you soon. Mm -hmm.